What is your favorite space food? Well, all the food is pretty tasty. I think my favorite is beef stroganoff. We have a, uh, a little galley, a little kitchen area where we dispense water into our food because it comes up dehydrated. And we mix it around with our fingers a little bit to get the water well mixed. And then we stick it in the oven and warm it up for a few minutes. And then take a pair of scissors and cut the package open and eat it. We also really enjoy things like M&M's and we'll show you why. I am not good at science. What encouraged you to be an astronaut? And did you like science when you were a kid? Because behind astronaut by the fact that the Apollo program was going on when I was in school. It looked like a fun thing to do. I actually liked science when I was little because it seemed like it was like kind of a, a decoder for the mysteries of what was going on around me in nature. It helped me understand what was what I could see, what I saw in the world around me. That was a demonstration of one of our favorite birds, M and M's, and you can see why they're just really fun to eat in space. And I thought I heard you ask, say something about that you're not good at science, and I don't quite believe that because you, oftentimes when you're not good at something, it's just that you haven't learned how to yet. And I know that you're there at the Challenger Center doing lots of great science on your missions, and, and, and I hope you enjoy, and, and I know you're enjoying it while you do it, and, and as long as you realize what you're doing is science fair, you're observing, you're experimenting, you're helping, um, helping everyone understand how the world works, and that's what science is all about. Zoom out the camera. Please. <laughs> How do you brush your teeth in space? Well, your timing's excellent. Of course, after eating all that candy, it's time to brush my teeth. We get these things called hygiene kits in space. Each one of us gets one. And inside the hygiene kit, we have, uh, we've got shavers, we have toothbrushes, we have toothpaste, we have a comb, brush, we have deodorant. Are you going to give a demo of how you actually brush your teeth? And I believe there's a towel behind you there. Make sure you get the back corners too and don't forget the floss. Let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit so you can see how better brushing his teeth. The big challenge here is what do you do with, since you can't spit down the sink, what do you do? Al's dentist would be very proud of him. When you're done, of course you just take a towel and you, you spit out into the towel and then you try the towel out when you're done because there's no sink to spit into. Of course, if there was, there wouldn't be any gravity to take it down the sink. Another interesting th thing is how we wash our bodies in space. And we have this, uh, we have shampoo that you put in your hair. In fact, mine's still a little wet from my shampoo this morning. And it, uh, you don't have to rinse it out. And we also have the soap. And watch what happens when you wash your face.
I don't know if you can see that there, but the soapy water just uh, with surface tension just sticks to your face. And you mix it around with your hands a little bit and a washcloth. And you've got a clean face. I think we've made a mess enough, mess enough up here with all this water. Time for the next question. How will the experiments on the ISS help continue and further the mission to Mars? is trying to figure out how humans adapt to being in space. As you can understand right now, we're already sending unmanned probes to Mars and we're doing lots of science out there. Uh, the hard part is going to be how humans can adapt and live out in space for long periods of time. Uh, how do we deal with radiation? How do we deal with the fact that our bones um, don't do well? And how do we do things like recycle our res resources out there, like water and air and food? And speaking of food, Al, that's a great segue. We need to figure out how we're going to feed our explorers for a long duration, back on the moon and on to Mars. And here's where you come in, because we really do need your help. We'd like you to help us figure out how we're going to grow food on the, on the moon and on Mars. For our crewmate, Clay Anderson, for our crewmate Clay Anderson, we brought up a small growth chamber for him to grow some basil seeds, and he's going to do some experimentation with it. He's really looking forward to it. Being a Nebraska kid, he uh, he loves farms and uh, and growing things, and he's really looking forward to that and doing some experimenting with it. And we also brought up 10 million basil seeds with us. We're going to bring them back down to earth for all of you, and we hope that you can help us figure out how we're going to grow food on moon and on Mars, if you would please design some growth chambers for us. And we can't wait to take a look at your designs, whether they're drawings or, uh, or actual models that you build. We are very much looking forward to seeing those, and then we'll have these basil seeds for you to do some experimentation and see how your growth chambers work. special teacher or mentor when you were a kid? Who was it and why were they special to you? You know, that's an interesting question because all through life it seems like you have special teachers. From when you're a kid in elementary school, up through high school, up through college, up through graduate school, and then well beyond that when you're, when you're uh, out of college. And some of my uh, mentors that have meant more than anything to me are seven very special people who I believe are mentors to you too. And that was um, the Challenger crew. They were my teachers, and I believe they are teaching us today still. And the benefits of what you all get to do in the Challenger centers are a result of their great teaching. What qualities does it take to be an astronaut? I feel the chief quality is just straight perseverance. Uh, the road to being an astronaut is, is sometimes very long. Uh, Barbara and I have both been pursuing this goal for decades for each of us. And so it's one of the things where you, you work hard, you, you go and you're working hard at life, uh, but when the opportunity comes up, you have to go out there and seize it. And the skills that you're learning and practicing and doing at the Challenger Center are the same kinds of things that you need for up here, too. I know you're doing your missions as teams, and teamwork is so important. And we are learning that every day here on the space station and the space shuttle.